Okay, we're ready. Great. Um, welcome to the January 24th, 2022 meeting of the CB6 Land Use and Waterfront Committee. My name is uh, Sandy McKee and I'm the chair of the Land Use and Waterfront Committee. This meeting is called to order at 6.33 tonight. Tonight we are joined by Assistant District Manager Brendan Byrd. Members of the public, you can raise any questions or concerns that you have through the question and answer feature of Zoom. If there is time following the committee's discussion, we will field questions from the public. Larry Shire will be taking the minutes of tonight's meeting. Thank you, Larry. You all should have received an email from the board office with a link to a doodle sign-up sheet for minute takers at your committee meetings in 2022. For your convenience, the link to the sign-up sheet is being posted in the chat. We will now take attendance by roll call. Committee members, I will call your name and you will unmute yourselves. When your name is called, please stay present. I will announce if there is quorum. Jim Collins. Okay, I do see Jim is here. Adam Hartke. I'm here. Excellent. Sorry, I was doing the chat, the doodle sign up. No problem. Your count is here. Um, I do not see Adam. Molly Hollister. Here. Kavitha Matthew. Here. Sandy McKee. Here. Jean Santoro. I do not see Jean. Larry Shire. Here. And Seligman. I do not see in. Lou Sapersky. I do not see Lou. Sandra Sherrod. Here. Letty Simon. Here. And Kathy Thompson. I do not see Kathy, but we have a quorum. The agenda for tonight's meeting was distributed ahead of time by the board office and appears on the screen before you. If there are no objections, we'll adopt the agenda as stated. Small revision, we're going to have our discussion of the legislation um, be number one and our update be number two. Um, members of the committee, if you object to adopting the agenda, you may raise your hand through Zoom. Seeing no objections, the agenda for tonight's meeting is adopted. The minutes from the November 22nd Land Use and Waterfront meeting and the October 7th Strategic Community Planning Committee meeting were distributed ahead of time by the board office. If there is no objection, we will adopt the minutes as, <coughs> as drafted. Members of the committee, if you object to adopting the minutes, you may raise your hand through Zoom. Seeing no objection, the minutes for the October 7th Strategic Community, Community Planning Committee and the November 22nd Land Use and Waterfront um, Committee meeting are adopted. They will soon be available on the CB6 website. In order to conduct an efficient meeting, we need to observe a few ground rules. No one may speak until granted the floor. Committee members, if you have a question about committee business or wish to make a motion, please raise your hand through Zoom. The chat function should not be used for committee business or questions about agenda topics. All such remarks should be made on the record by raising your hand through Zoom. Chats should only be used to alert us to any technical difficulties you're having or to state in writing information such as an email address that was already stated aloud on the record during the meeting. When a committee member is given the floor to speak, I will identify you and you can unmute yourself so that you can speak. We are required by New York State law to create a verbatim transcript of the meeting, so please keep your questions and comments succinct and germane to the discussion. Our first um, agenda item will be discussion of legislation which will require New York State or a state agency to purchase zero emission vehicles beginning in 2023, and another um, piece of legislation that would prohibit a homeowners association from banning or putting unreasonable limitations on the installation of an electrical vehicle charging station. 
that's a rather long title, but um, <clears throat> I did ask if um, if we could have sort of a Jackson, if he could give us a brief description of some of the other bills that are um, currently in the assembly. I know it's this is something that uh, vehicle charging is something that we've talked about previously and we want to support. So Jackson, I'll turn it over to you. Great, well, thanks a lot. Um, nice to see folks. Uh, my name is Jackson, I'm Assemblyman Harvey Epstein's legislative director. Um, and I used to also be a, a representative um, to community board six for the office. Um, so it's nice to be back. Um, yeah, so thanks for that. And um, I'm happy to, to really quickly go over uh, the two bills that are on the agenda. The first is a, a really straightforward idea. It basically requires um, the state to only purchase electric vehicles um, unless there is no, or sorry, let me back up a little bit. It's actually zero emission vehicles is exactly what it says in the text. Um, and uh, unless there is no zero emission vehicle option for the type of vehicle that the state is trying to purchase. Um, and then the second bill is another pretty straightforward idea. It's modeled after a law in um, California and there's some other states also adopting similar laws. It's a type of legislation that's being referred to as a right to charge. Um, bill and basically in in this case it just prohibits a homeowners association from um you know prohibiting the installation or operation of electric vehicle um chargers and the idea is you know obviously as a state we have certain goals for the adoption of electric vehicles um some are, are set out and also the reduction of uh, ghgs that's been set out in the uh, CLCPA. There was a bill that just got chaptered recently that said all cars need to be zero emission vehicles. Um, all cars, cars that are sold in the state need to be zero emission vehicles in, I think it, it's 2030 or 35, I can't remember off the top of my head. So, you know, in order for that to be feasible, we need to be doing everything we can be to increasing the amount of uh, infrastructure to charge these vehicles. Um, so the idea is just to, to limit any barriers. And I did share, um, you know, a list of some of the other bills related to electric vehicle charging that are being considered in Albany right now. Um, I can't speak uh, too knowledgeably about any of the bills that aren't sponsored by the assemblyman, uh, but I would uh, love if if folks, um, you know, could review these, and if you're interested in um, learning more about them, I'm, I'm happy to to try to answer any questions or you know connect you with the prime sponsors office. Um, and I will say just one last thing about another bill that our office is working on related to electric vehicle chargers. And um, you know, right now the the state has um, several programs, and we spend money to uh, subsidize the installation of electric vehicle chargers in you know, various places across the state. In New York City, um, far too many of those are actually in pay to park garages. And so what ends up happening is an electric vehicle owner who wants to charge their vehicle has to not only pay for the cost of charging, but also the cost to park in a garage, which as we know is, can be you know, prohibitively Expensive. So we're going to be introducing legislation soon that would prohibit the state from dispersing any funds or otherwise, um, you know, subsidizing or creating programs uh, to install chargers unless, um, it, it specifically in commercial garages, unless that garage agrees to, to waive the access fee for a person who is only trying to, to charge their vehicle. That's one more thing um, coming down the pike, at least from us. So welcome any comments you have about the legislation, any questions, um, if I can't answer those, I don't know actually if there's a Q and A, but I'm happy to answer any, any questions, um, you know, offline too. So thanks. Um, we, do, we do have some questions from the committee. Jim, you had your hand up first. Yeah. 
Hi, uh, Jackson. It's Jim Collins. Um, I have a lot of reservations about this bill for a number of reasons. Um, Which one? First, the 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 requirement that the state buy buy uh, electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, building out that infrastructure is going to take several years. Um, outside the New York metropolitan area, I mean, uh, I'm a native of Western New York, down on the southern tier. Uh, down in the Allegheny, Cattaraugus, Chautauqua County area. And um, I know that there's virtually no electric car infrastructure there um, to support the electric vehicles. Moreover, um, I don't know that we are well situated to deal with electric cars generally as a nation. Uh, neodymium, which is the, the magnet that is used for um, developing these cars or for, for running these cars, is, is mined almost exclusively in China. And the mining of that rare earth is a uh, environmentally horrendous operation as is obviously the lithium that's used for the batteries, which is more widely known. Uh, and moreover, when we go to replace the, the lithium batteries, um, they're very expensive to replace. And they are, uh, they are also very difficult to dispose of. I mean, there's some talk of recycling, but I don't know necessarily that it has been been brought to that level yet. So I think uh, the legislation is probably jumping the gun. We are probably at least five, mostly more likely 10 years away from being able to do this uh, correctly and efficiently. And uh, also to take into consideration some of the national security concerns with respect to the neodymium um, element. Uh, so I, I would oppose this at this point. Um, and if you want to respond, Jackson. I didn't hear a question, but um, those are points well <laughs> taken. Uh, and I do think that the uh, date in the legislation is ambitious, and that's certainly up for negotiation. So points well taken. Um, Larry, you had your hand up as well. Uh, sure. I was uh, going to point out that uh, the focus of the second bill is uh, on homeowners associations and if we're dealing with uh, New York City um, there are many areas which um, have um, apartment buildings actually most uh, areas with uh, commercial garages um, and uh, you might want to think about adding language that uh, references condominium boards and co-op boards as well. That is a great point. Um, it's such a good idea that it's already been done. And it's actually, um, it was a law that passed last year in uh, 2021. Um, and I can't remember exactly. It's in the Co-op and Condo Act. And I Thanks, think Larry. one of the things, um, now that we have this list, I think it would be very good if, if we could go through it and find the, um, I, I'm, I know Jim has concerns. Um, I think I just Googled where rare earth is and it says United States is the second um, amount after China. So yeah, of course there, there's lots of debate about this, but um, if we could take that list that we have and see if there's some other uh, bills that we'd be interested in Kind of packaging into one supportive measure. I know we've we've passed things in this committee previously that supported um, electric vehicle charging stations, and I know we were looking for places to locate them within our district. So I think it is something we are interested in. Um, could we maybe take a look at that list and and move forward with some suggestions for a resolution? I think I'm looking for a volunteer. Okay. <laughs> um.
Um, is this something that we as a committee feel we'd like to support? Uh, no comment. Okay. Well, I guess, uh, Jackson, thank you. Well, oh, Adam, sorry, you have your hand up. Yeah, sorry. I, I mean, I'll speak my two cents. Um, I think generally it is like to echo what you said before, you know, we, we have several resolutions out of this committee regarding EV chargers. Um, I guess the question I have um, is just what specifically do we want to um, support? Um, like, is it a specific bill? Is it just a sort of specific idea? Um, that, that's just my general question. I, I think we want to look through this, the series of bills that Jackson gave us and see which one best suits our, our goals here. And partly, mm -hmm. um, um, Assemblyman Epstein is our, we'd like to support his, you know, his looking into this and um, as, as it directly probably affects our community. But I, I don't think we're ready to write a resolution tonight, for instance. We really want to look at all of these bills and come up with a kind of thoughtful conclusion to what we should or should not support. Jim? Um, no, I, I would just, I'm posting a, uh, a schedule that shows the deposits of rare earths around the world. Neodymium is particularly important because that's the one that's used for the magnets that create the, that create the, the, the power of the cars. And as I said before, that's almost exclusively um, in China. So I'm going to post this up into everyone, I guess, yeah. the, the link. And, and you'll see that we have very small deposits in the United States. China has the, the vast majority. Uh, and some other countries have deposits as well. Um, but again, they tend to be extremely filthy to be extracted. Um, and as I said, I, I don't think we are anywhere near um, the technological, uh, we, we are not, not yet near the technological, uh, I guess you'd call it the, the point of, of technology where we can fully distribute these and, and treat them as a regular, you know, as we would a, an, an internal combustion engine. Adam, That's my you have, uh, thanks, Jim. Adam, do you have your hand raised? Yeah, I was, I'm sorry. I, I, I forgot to clarify. Um, so do we want to maybe, um, do we, are we looking to write a um, draft resolution tonight or are we looking maybe? No. To, okay, no. Next, next month? Right. We, Got it. we really need to, I think, go through these series of resolutions and see if there's a package of them that we could support or if there's, um, or not support. Like we obviously are going to vote on this. We don't, we don't have a decision yeah. yet. Um, but something that we could put together that would address overall all of these different issues. You can see there are many different bills right now in the assembly. So it's a, it's a topic that, or it's a, it's a very topical idea. Yeah, I, I would I would agree with that. Um, I'm happy to sort of lend a hand if need be. I mean, just sort of to echo some of the, the larger market trends. You know, you um, a lot of automakers are sort of moving in this direction. You know, NYSERDA has a great um, interactive site to show you where all the EV chargers are um, within the state. Um, and so it's definitely you know a, a, something that's you know definitely on the forefront you know of the state, if not if not our if not our board. So yeah, happy to help. Okay, great. So we'll, um, Kavitha? I was just going to say I can work uh, with whatever, whoever decides to, you know, review these bills um, to put something together. So it sounds like it's you and Adam, if that's Adam and his helper. And you. Looking forward to it. Okay, great. Thank you. And thank you, Jackson. We'll, we'll take a look at the full list and, and um, we'll have a resolution for or against next month great well thanks Thank for you. inviting me and uh you know i will share that other bill that unintroduced bill that i mentioned um would love to have any feedback you have on that too so thanks all and have a good night okay and <laughs> excuse me next is our update um from the department of dining design and construction on the east side coastal resiliency project Thanks, Sandy. Um, let me just share my screen. Oh, I need, I think I need permission to share screen. Yep, just a moment. Thank you. 
to have it now. And I will apologize in advance if there's any background noise from my family. <laughs> um, okay. Let's see. Okay, can you see the cover slide for the presentation? Okay, great. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Desiree Gazzo from HNTB Lero, the program manager, construction manager from the Eastside Coastal Resiliency Project. Um, I'm joined here tonight by um, colleagues from DDC and the PMCM team uh, to present a fairly quick update on um, the Eastside Coastal Resiliency Project. Okay. So highlights, we have an overview of the project and contracts. Uh, we'll discuss project area two. I have one slide update on project area one, um, MWBE opportunities, um, and just a quick what we've heard. So again, this is a project area overview, which I think most folks have, have seen. Um, I will say that we are constantly updating the website with information. So if you haven't been to the Eastside Coastal Resiliency website, please um, do take a look. This, this map is on there as well. Um, for overview of contracts, uh, Project Area 1 received notice to proceed in August of last year. Um, since then, the construction work has begun. There's a partial park closure, and you'll see it on um, in the next couple of slides, uh, south of what we're calling Stanton Street, um, and that is where the Greenway is, closure is as well. Um, there's some work that has started in the shared use path just north of that area. Um, we'll talk about the um, upgrade, upcoming work at Delancey Street Bridge. Um, and then the passive lawn space that is at the southernmost portion of the park down by Corlears Hook Ferry um, that has just recently opened to the public as well. Uh, for project area two, um, we are in construction uh, in Astor Levy Playground, Stike Oak Park, um, and we have about 650 feet of flood wall installed. Um, and then for parallel conveyance, that project has been advertised back in November, um, and the bid opening is scheduled for uh, later this month. For PA2 construction progress, as you can see here, the kind of pinkish color is the areas um, that are under construction. Um, so there is around Stuyvesant, in the Stuyvesant Cove Park area, um, there is the pile installation and flood wall construction um, at the East 23rd Street intersection. Uh, there's some utility work and pile installation um, along the West Service Road. Um, again, ongoing pile installation there um, that will connect to the Astor Levy um, flood wall, um, again, in Astor Levy Playground. Um, in Astor Levy Playground, they're working on that flood wall foundation and then the overall park reconstruction. And I have a photo in the next slide. We'll take a look at that. And then I have an update on the Hamble Court um, restoration as well. Um, there is some uh, kind of investigative work at, um, at East 15th Street between Avenue C and the FDR Drive. That's within the Con Ed facility. Uh, so that work is being coordinated with Con Ed. Um, and then there is um, a little bit of sewer work that needs to be finished up um, on the FDR Drive, North Brown, uh, in the exit seven ramp area. Um, so we kind of keep that on here um, because that task has not been fully completed yet. So here's a construction photo. This we've been showing um, construction photos of the flood wall. So this is, I think, the first we've shown within Astor Levy um, Playground. So there's, uh, we put the rendering next to it. So these three windows here on the Parks Department building, um, those are the three windows right here. It's a little difficult um, to see, but they are definitely making progress with, and, and this was this was a couple of weeks ago because this was for uh, the CB3 meeting, I think. So um, this is a couple of weeks ago and they are continuing to make progress. So this is the area that will be, um, that will be the playground area. And then just 
Uh, to the left will be the uh, basketball area. And then we're kind of standing, I guess, kind of just right here. So just in front of the handball court area. Um, so again, they're um, installing the curbs and the sidewalks. Um, and that will be, Astro Levy Playground will be open in the spring um, of this year, which is very exciting. Um, this is a photo of the uh, flood wall in Psycho Park. Uh, again, it's showing the different stages of the construction. Oops, my mouse is not wanting to work. Um, so down here, you have the uh, pile installation. This is the formwork here, the vertical formwork where they pour the concrete in, and then this is the completed flood wall here. So this is um, definitely progressing. Um, a few active advisories, just a reminder, um, the Cove Park closure at East 20th Street, I think most everybody is aware of that, that happened back in November, but that did kind of introduce a new traffic pattern. So I just kept it in here um, for today's discussion. And then um, upcoming, the week of February 7th, um, there will be a temporary closure of the handball court. Um, we do have some signage posted around the handball court. I do have to go back and update it, um, but that will begin the week of February 7th. And there are some, um, there's some restoration there. I think some um, painting and just kind of some surface treatments to the uh, handball court area that needs to happen. So that will be again, a temporary closure for approximately three weeks. Um, and we could provide updates uh, when that opens. So for project area one construction activities, again, just a really quick update for those of you who do use um, East River Park. So as you can see, this kind of pinkish area is closed. This is kind of the phase one um, from about Stanton Street. Again, Stanton Street doesn't come down, but it is the, the um, kind of side street that is kind of parallel with the closure here. Um, and that is just south of East Houston Street. Um, and then the kind of shallow clearing and grubbing activities are continuing in the closed area of the park. The shared use path closure is from Montgomery Street to again, Stanton Street. Right now, um, there's also a small closure, um, a small section closed here, right outside of East Houston Street. And that is for the Con Ed um, utility work there. Um, but you can now um, kind of complete this loop here, which um, before the shared use class closure here, that was not possible. Um, so we were able to make that happen. Um, and then you could kind of do come back up here to the shared use path and then the Esplanade is open and the shared use path is open, you know, north into Stycove Park. Uh, the Delancey Street Bridge has been, the pedestrian bridge here has been closed um, since the construction has begun. Um, and the Delancey Street Bridge removal will start um, tomorrow evening. Um, again, that's evening work on the park side. So that will only be evening work on the park side of the bridge um, for several weeks. And that's from about three p.m. to 11.59 p.m. Um, so it's not kind of overnight, it's just night work. Um, and then the work will continue on the community side. Um, and then the final piece will be to remove the section over the FDR. Um, looking forward for project area one um, will be the temporary bridge um, from Corlears Hook Park to the ferry there and then the Corlears um, Hook Bridge. Um, and then there's the ongoing utility work as well. So we are providing updates in the bulletins and advisory um, as we receive them. Um, for our hiring and virtual resources event, uh, we were uh, originally looking to have this in January and for availability reasons and a couple of other um, scheduling things. Again, we were gonna have it in person, but then with the COVID resurgence, um, we decided it would be best and safest if we um, kept it as virtual. So we are having an Esker um, winter virtual information session and resource fair. Um, we have done quarterly events in the past before. Uh, this one is a little different. We've invited the New York City Department of Small Business Services, Workforce One, and the Lower East Side Employment Network to join us. Um, and it will be 
um, at, from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. In the past, we've done morning um, morning presentation. So we're trying an evening presentation. Uh, so when you do register, there will be a short survey that will ask, um, you know, what uh, what time slots you prefer. Um, again, we try to vary so different folks can attend. Um, but we think this one will be a little different because it will have kind of a general session um, in the beginning, and then there'll be breakout rooms that are focused on some of these um, some of these items down here. Um, uh, strategies for successful employment, apprenticeship opportunities, um, and training opportunities. Um, and then you could pick kind of select what time works best for you. So we are looking forward to a different format for this event um, and having some, you know, a local participation as well. So we do encourage everyone to sign up. Uh, registration is open on the website. And again, please fill out that little survey. It's I think it's five or six questions long, and it would really help um, help us plan events in the future. Um, so this is a quick update from DOT. We had presented this um, again at the community advisory group meeting and at uh, CB3. So I did leave it in here since the deadline is approaching for the spring launch. Um, it's the DOT Open Streets program. Um, again, I think they have several launches, but the deadline for the spring launch is January 28th, which is just a couple of days away. Um, so again, we do encourage you to um, take advantage of this program. Um, there was one other update. Um, I didn't do a what we've heard slide because there was only one thing on it, but I think there was um, some question about ferry signage at one of the past meetings. So we did reach out to EDC um, Ferry Group and Sandra, we sent that uh, information along to you, but um, they have very specific um, guidelines on where a ferry sign can be. I think it was a half a mile and I, I should have pulled it up before the meeting, um, but I could you know, send that over to you and you could distribute it as well again. Um, but again, there are very specific guidelines of where a ferry sign can be and it has to be um, on the street that is directly um, leading to the ferry. It can't be like turn the corner here. Um, so. Again, if there are folks that have specific comments on where they feel um, a ferry sign should be, um, we can definitely explore that with EDC. Um, but we did reach out to them and we can, you know, we'll go out in the field as well um, to, uh, to look at that again. Um, but we did receive some guidance from them. So, and then that's, that was, then that's, that's the end of the presentation for today. And if I might just ask, the, the open streets is, um, that's what the DOT is advocating in lieu of the Greenway, is that correct? No, 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 no. We just wanted to, again, we shared it at the, um, just again, since some of the open spaces are limited, like, you know, the parks are kind of partially open um, to have kind of other you know, open spaces and places to play, and run, and you know, recreate. Um, that was kind of, you know, just a resource. Uh, should communities be interested in that? So again, I didn't want to. We presented it at the other community board meetings, and the deadline was so close. So we did want to just um, put that in there as well. Okay, thank you. And Adam has had his hand up. Um, it's about the middle of the presentation. Oh, th thanks, Andy. Um, so I, I had a question actually. Um, to pivot off your question about the me mediation, I know for the pier, um, uh, parks, uh, uh, waterside pier, excuse, excuse me, new wave pier, pardon, um, uh, implement, uh, put down the picnic tables and the other sort of um, activation elements, but we're still waiting on the um, on the umbrellas and whatnot that we were told it was delayed because of supply chain issues. Do we have an update? Will those be available uh, starting in the spring or maybe summer of this year? Unfortunately, that's a question for parks and they, are not attending this evening. Okay, I didn't know if they were here or not. Thanks. I, we tried to have them attend, but they um, okay. Thanks. are not here. Um, uh, Larry, oh. Oops, sorry. Oh, sorry. If there are any specific questions, we can, you know, take take them back. So we we don't we can you know ask that question. Oh, um, sorry. I just wanted to interject because um, with regards to the umbrellas, 
I did hear from the Parks Department that they plan on installing umbrellas at the picnic tables at Waterside Pier this spring. So, yes, it, from what I've heard, it's the spring. And I, I think in terms of open streets, we actually have one application in our district. That's it, as far as I know. So, um, But Larry, go ahead. You have your hand up. Uh, thank you, Sandy. Uh, hi, Desiree. Um, there are two things I want to um, inquire about. Uh, the first is uh, something that you uh, described very briefly in your presentation. And then the second thing is a, a follow up on the uh, ferry signage. Uh, the item in the presentation that I'd like to hear more about is the investigations along 15th Street, which as you um, may know, uh, was an exit for the FDR drive, um, exit number six in the southbound direction. And I was wondering uh, what's being investigated and is there any possibility that that um, exit would be reopened in the future? Um, thanks, Larry. I think, so what I brought up was exit seven. Uh, hold on a second. This right here, the northbound exit seven ramp. Okay, that's not 15th Street, that's 18th Street. Right, I, right, that's, the, that's where the work is happening. Okay, be, but the ramp begins at 15th Street and runs all the way, um, um, and, and, the, and the fence that you're building is on the, um, on the west side of the, uh, uh, the viaduct ramp. Oh, I think that might be a question for DOT, I don't, the only um, the only exit ramp work that we have happening here is just right here, um, kind of where the number six is. Okay, um, so no, no, that's, I can follow up with that. Oh, okay, because that's that's very different than where I had envisioned what was being investigated. So at this location, uh, what's being looked for? Because this is uh, very close to where the undermining is uh, in the seawall. So in the the um, at the exit seven ramp here, there was just um, some sewer work that needed to happen, some sewer upgrades that are happening kind of as part of the Esker project. Um, so that there was just sewer work, and most of it, from what I understand, has happened already. Um, and there may just be um, a little bit of work that's just finishing up there. I think I walked past there today, and it didn't even look like the. Um, lane was still closed. It looked like everything was open, but I think again, there's still a little bit of work that needs to happen there. So uh, because of this undermining and oftentimes that is caused by a faulty sewer, I'm wondering if uh, there may be some additional investigations that might be required uh, to, um, to save the seawall. I know um, I could certainly bring that back. Um, I've made a note to do that, um, but I think EDC is working um, with, you know, is working on the seawall work, and there is another DOT project that is happening in that area, so I will bring that back and try and get a little bit more information for you um, in that area. Okay, thank you, Desiree. Now, uh, moving, moving on to the uh, follow-up on the, uh, the inquiry you made uh, with respect to additional um, uh, and um, redirective uh, ferry signage. Um, you had mentioned, if, uh, if I didn't hear incorrectly, that this uh, relates to um, uh, a street. Well, there is no street that um, leads one to this ferry landing. So how do you interpret that? And uh, where would you see those ferry signs possibly going? Yeah, I think that's something that we need to explore. And I did find the email. So it says here, and again, maybe I could put it in the chat. Um, also, I don't know if that's possible, Sandy, if I have those. Um, it says all pedestrian ferry signage in um, upland areas near New York City uh, ferry landings follow DOT signage requirements. Each sign could be no farther than a half a mile from the landing and it must point directly to the landing instead of pointing to say to a street where you'd have to make a turn. If the community board or residents have suggestions where additional signage could be added, 
that works within these guidelines, we are happy to consider it and work with DOT to see if it could be implemented. Okay, uh, based on how I interpret that, I would say that um, uh, a sign that sends a person uh, up north on Avenue C or uh, east on East 18th Street or East 20th Street uh, would meet those um, uh, criteria. So uh, let me just um, ask you to uh, confirm whether uh, that would be um, what DOT's interpretation is as well. Sure. And might I, could I just interject? Um, Larry, are you talking about signage during the construction? To alert people uh, I'm, I'm, while the construction's I, I, ongoing. Well, I'm I'm speaking about uh, that, as well as the ultimate permanent signage, which uh, would have to fit that criteria. During the uh, construction, uh, I, I anticipate that um, temporarily uh, access, either from uh, the 20th Street end or the Avenue C 18th Street end. Uh, would be um, interrupted uh, unless uh, that there is a detour that um, can be worked in uh, to keep um, access from both ends open. But signs that uh, send you at least to the beginning of that detour are the signs that I'm talking about right now and ultimately <clears throat> permanently. And so um, do you know, um, Desiree, if there will be detour for the ferry? Is that something? Yeah, that's so, so the ferry terminal will remain open at all times. Um, mm -hmm. However, when, when we get into the portion of the, um, of the work, oh, oops, I'm on the right slide. Okay, so when we get into the portion of the work that is in the southern portion of Stuyvesant Cove Park, you will... From what I understand, again, we're not there yet, but from what I understand, you will be able to only access the ferry from one side. So once that happens, there will definitely be detour signage, you know, from the closed side that says, you know, go to 20th Street, for example, to access the ferry. Or, you know, if it's the other way around, then it will say, you know, head towards, you know, Avenue C and 18th Street to access the ferry. And that's, well, that's similar. We have um, ferry signage in Project Area One, where the you can only access to from Corlier Swift Park, and there's kind of a ferry signage uh, detour there as well. Well, we uh, uh, would look forward to uh, to that, but we don't have any signage today that's uh, worth a damn. Thank you. Sure. Um, I also had a, a question. Um, I was wondering the status of the flyover design. Is that something that um, you have any update for us? That would be um, a DOT um, item. However, mm -hmm. it is our understanding that that is still, you know, it recently received the funding and now they are going through kind of the design process on that. But I don't have any update on the, on the schedule. Um, <laughs> Excuse me, do we have any other questions? Um, I see that Dina Elkin from Solar One, who um, is registered as a member of the public, has her hand raised. So um, I can unmute her. If... Um, certainly. Okay, now, now she doesn't have her hand raised. Okay. Um, <laughs> I do see a question, though, from a member of the public in the Q&A box, which from a long uh, green. And um, the question is, um, what is happening with preserving trees and are you using AstroTurf? Um, no, in Stuyvesant Cove Park, there will not be any AstroTurf. I don't believe there's AstroTurf in Astor Levy or Murphy Brothers as well. Um, so Stuyvesant Cove Park will be uh, replanted um, I don't have a rendering of it. Again, I could certainly bring back some renderings uh, next time. I'll make a note um, to do that. But there will be similar to what is in Stuyvesant Cove Park now. It will be a series of um, kind of bermed areas. Well, there aren't bermed areas now, but there's kind of planted areas with like a meandering path. And that um, kind of overall design will stay 
um, first I was in Grove Park and where the against the wall, um, the planting beds will kind of be bermed um, and, and planted as well. Okay, <laughs> if there are no other questions, um, we, we definitely hope to hear from the Parks Department and DOT because I think a lot of our questions, as you noted, are really for them. Um, but we will keep trying to get them to attend the meeting. Um, so if no other open questions, great, thank you. Oh, Larry, sorry. Uh, I was uh, hoping to uh, maybe get uh, a little bit of a confirmation on when those uh, playgrounds uh, and um, uh, the handball court and everything around Asser Levy uh, uh, would be uh, reopened and when uh, your uh, gate at 23rd Street would be, uh, would be completed as you move on uh, further south. And then uh, as you move on further south, um, and I guess maybe this relates to what Dina might have been raising your hand about, but I'm curious how um, uh, the beginning of work uh, for the new Solar One building uh, will fit into this as well. Sure, so to go start backwards, um, the EDC would have to speak on anything related to the new Solar One building. Um, so again, if, if you'd like to have EDC come and prevent, present an update on that, they would need to speak on that. Um, you know, it has been put in the contract that, you know, during the time that we're constructing ESCAR, we will work with EDC and we've been working with EDC. We have conversations with EDC, um, you know, to incorporate work that um, EDC needs to have happen, you know, in the cycle park area so that we have been doing and we will continue to do um, for the contract. For Azure Levy Playground, um, the opening is scheduled, I believe, for late March. Um, I can certainly double check on that, but I think that was um, the date that, that we had set. So um, we will um, look for Astor Levy Playground and again, that 23rd Street gate um, to open again around March or April. We have to, you know, it will be, it needs to be planted. So we have to make sure that the weather is okay. March is sometimes a tricky month. You know, sometimes it snows into April. So we do need to make sure that we can get the plantings all done um, and then fully open the park. Thank you. Yeah. Sandy, you're on mute. Sorry, Dina just um, noted that she raised her hand accidentally. Um, and she says that the Solar One building is still on pause pending the execution of EDC's master and maritime contract with the city. We'll do an update when we have more informa new information about it. Um, and uh, someone asked about, is there any an update on the flyover bridge? And that's, we just actually just discussed that a few moments ago. Um, and then another question, will Asser Levy have access on both ends? And we'll ask, specifically, she's um, asking if Asser Levy will have Asser Turf. But I believe I you said no. Yeah, I don't believe Asser Levy will have Asser Turf. Murphy Brothers, now that I'm looking at the map, because the fields are there. So Murphy Brothers might have Asser Turf, but I can certainly come back with a definitive answer on that you know, by the end of the week for, you know, if not tomorrow, by the end of the week. Um, and who, whomever answered that question, if you want to um, put a, a, um, a, you could, there's an inquiry tool um, on the ESCO website. If you would like a direct response, we can certainly provide that, you know, I could provide that for, for you, not a problem. Um, yeah, I don't, there's not any AstroTurf at Astro, uh, at Astro Levy Playground. There might be at Murphy Brothers though. Um, one more question here. Um, will there mm -hmm. be native plantings in the new plantings? And yes. I'm assuming this is Stuyvesant Cove Park. Yes, in both Stuyvesant Cove and Astor Levy and Murphy Brothers, there is there are native plantings throughout the entire Esker design. Um, again, the plantings you know, needed to be resilient plantings uh, for flood protection, et cetera, because many of the 
Again, the parks here um, are in front of that flood wall, um, but many of the resilient plantings are also native um, pollinators as well, etc. Thank you. I think that's all the questions. Um, okay, and we will um, we'll continue to ask EDC, DOT, and Parks to come and update us on the project as well. Thanks very much. Thank you, and everyone. So we'll move on now to um, our update on the work of our community planning fellow. Kavitha, do you want to... Um, Take over and Corinne, Corinne. Um, I think Kieran's gonna present for us. I'm sorry, I'm not on camera, but Kieran, um, we wanted to just, again, maybe a re, I don't know if you wanna give a recap of the presentation you gave already. I'm not sure if everybody in this committee was at the, was at the full board in December when you presented before, but um, Kieran's been mostly on holiday, but has made a little more progress around the census tracts and trying to, I know, um, he had a couple of questions for us regarding that, uh, just kind of aligning the census tracts with our um, district and um, also just getting some more direction on where to take his, his um, studies. So Karen, if you wanna give us an overview, maybe we can um, do that first and then take some questions if, if you have them or if yeah. the committee has them. Yeah, um, yeah, I was just gonna quickly kind of uh, review what I did at the last meeting and then get into more of a discussion. Um, but hi, everyone. I think I met most of you at the last meeting, but my name is Kieran McMalloy. Um, I'm a second year city and regional planning master's student at Pratt and a community planning fellow with CB6 through the Fund for the City of New York. Um, and I grew up and still live in the Lower East Side, so not too far from CD6. So I'm excited to be working here. Um, I think most of you probably saw the presentation. So I'm mostly gonna reserve time um, to hear from you all. Um, but just as a refresher, my project, which I've been working on with Kavita and Jesus, is to take a look back at the Eastern CD6 197A plan that was adopted by the city council in 2008 um, and consider how it might be updated for 2022. Um, the original plan took many years to go from the initial idea to being adopted, and it covered a comprehensive range of topics with a focus on waterfront access and open space and large scale redevelopments that were in the pipeline at the time. Um, and I started in November. Um, and as Kavita said, I was on winter break for the past month, so I haven't um, been working for that long yet, but so far I've spent a lot of my time actually just reading through the plan, which is pretty long, and then building a demographic um, database on CD6. Um, so the things I've already done are highlighted on green in this slide. Um, and then the image on the right side of the screen is an example of some of the demographic research I've been doing. So it shows where people who live in CD6, which is outlined in like orange um, work. In the next few weeks, my plan is to go through each of the recommendations from the 197A plan and assess whether and to what extent um, they've been implemented. And once I'm done with that, I'll be done with what I see as like the first phase of the project, which is kind of understanding what has already happened. Um, and I plan on submitting an interim report in the next few weeks that'll give you all an idea of what I found in terms of key demographic changes and the status of the 197A plan recommendations. Uh, but then after that, my project is a little bit more wide open. So the idea for this second phase of the research is to offer recommendations for how to update the plan um, in today's world. But as I've thought about that more, I've been realizing how many potential directions I could go with that. So for example, one direction I could head in is to look at strategies for implementing the plan's original recommendations that have yet to be implemented. Um, so like one of the plan's recommendations is to create ferry piers at 23rd and 42nd Street, which obviously hasn't happened yet. So over the next few months, one thing I could think about is how the community board should go about trying to make this recommendation a reality. Um, another kind of like avenue I could go down um, is to offer potential updates to the recommendations or even propose new recommendations driven by the ways the district has changed 
and the ways that how we think about cities has changed um, since it was published. So for example, uh, we just heard about the ESCR project and coastal resiliency is something that I'm personally very interested in, but it was barely on the radar at the time of the plan's creation. So if a new 197A plan was being created in 2022, coastal resiliency would probably be a major focus. And I think it would be interesting to spend the next few months thinking about what that section might look like as part of my work. Um, and I'd love to do all of that research, but I'm realizing now that I don't have too much time. So I need to focus in on something that's achievable over the next few months. Um, to give you an idea of my timeline, I'll be working about 12 hours a week on this project through mid-April, um, which is why at this stage of the project, I think it's important to get feedback from you all. So I'll open the floor now. Um, and my broad question is, given everything I've just said, like how could I be most helpful over the next few months and what direction should the next uh, phase of my project take? Um, and then there's some sub questions below that you can feel free to answer. Uh, are there certain unimplemented or partially implemented recommendations from the plan that are a high priority for you all to see progress on? And how would you update the plan for 2022 now, if you could? Um, and I'll stop sharing so I can see you all, but thanks a lot. Um, great, I think uh, Larry had his hand up first and then Sandra. Uh, sure. Uh, the crossing of the FDR Drive um, is, uh, is pretty limited uh, in this district. Um, the number of bridges or underpasses are few in number. And at different times, um, and probably uh, Lou can address this because he has an institutional knowledge, uh, this board had uh, made uh, recommendations and maybe also included in the 197A plan were uh, proposals uh, for um, additional bridges, one going to Waterside, um, and there might even be a, um, uh, a, a bridge abutment that was uh, created, but nothing was ever built um, toward the north end of Waterside Plaza. And the other uh, being, uh, in connection with uh, the solo site where um, Con Edison used to have a power plant uh, that would uh, connect um, the community uh, with the um, uh, what's now the Con Ed Pier and uh, the area that um, will ultimately um, uh, be connected outside of the, uh, the UN uh, to complete the Greenway. Uh, so, uh, I'll ask Lou if, he, if uh, uh, Sandy, you don't mind, it, it might add to that. I don't remember the uh, solo site bridge discussion, but there was a very extensive discussion and in fact, some preparatory work done for a bridge um, uh, across the drive at 27th Street and the decking arrangements on the east side of the drive were put in place with the construction of Waterside, but accessing the bridge would, have, um, would mean going through the Bellevue campus. Um, and I don't know how far discussions were carried about that. There, there, there was a, a building there and it would have meant a pass-through with the building, but it's certainly something that should be explored uh, and we provide um, in much needed access, pedestrian access uh, to Waterside. Thank if you. I could, and just before Sandro um, starts, I think, I think um, Karen, you're, you're looking for sort of a high level um, input from our, our group, right? Like a, overall concepts that you we would like to, to move forward with. Um, yeah, that'd be helpful, definitely. Yeah. It's Sandra? If I can yes. add so, something when you're, when you're done, I'd like to add one more thing. Right, so I, I just wanted to try to address the question, uh, Karen, and so thank you so much for asking us some very poignant questions. I, I think a lot of our district has changed dramatically 
in the intervening years. Um, for example, we do have two ferry landings, not exactly where we originally thought that they would be perfect, but we do have two ferry landings that are very close in proximity. We have changes with the Alexandria Science uh, Complex, um, as well as changes with the entire East Side Esplanade, whether it's the Southern End, what we just heard from the East Side Coastal Resiliency Project and Project Area 2, to the further north by the UN. Um, and so I, I do think it would be helpful to take a look at some of the major uh, underlying themes of public waterfront access, um, planning for the residential or the commercial use of certain parts of the district better to um, kind of advance those as themes, but take them with the changing contextual environment that we now live in in 2021. So I, I would definitely advocate um, as, as you uh, suggested that we actually kind of not necessarily throw away everything, but don't fixate on certain things that today don't really make as much sense as they might have in 15 years ago at this point. Cool, thank um, you. Helpful. Kavitha? I don't know if Anne might have had her hand raised first. Oh, I'm, I'm no? sorry, I just, I see a row of hands. I'm, I'm not oh, sure. Okay. Kavitha, I think, I think yours was first. Okay, um, no, I just wanted to circle back and just say, you know, we have been looking at this quite a lot, especially with when we had the strategic planning committee uh, about open items that weren't quite um, realized through the 197A. A lot of that discussion happened around um, waterfront access. A lot of it happened around housing, affordable housing particularly. And I think those are still really important aspects of the plan that we'd like to realize maybe a, a modern version of them that makes sense given, you know, especially with housing, if we can look at what's happened over the last couple of decades, um, the, the loss of it. And um, my thought was when you overlay the demographic information, whether it's the income of populations or, you know, um, everything else that maybe the age groups may be significant, we could maybe bolster our, our arguments towards, you know, uh, what we need to pursue in the community, if that makes sense. I know it's kind of broad based, but but I do think, um, you know, what Sandra said too is right. We don't we don't want to go back in time. We want to look at the plan in a in a modern way in terms of, uh, and that's why I know you're you're kind of um, combing through all this data, which is is really helpful. So housing is definitely a, a priority. Um. If I may, I'd like to add something to my comments a little earlier. There was also an extended discussion of the uh, existing 25th Street Bridge. There are some, 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 some substantial problems uh, with the design of that bridge. It's quite old and uh, has very, been very difficult for people to use. And uh, there was been a number of proposals as how to how to address that and make it accessible uh, if it, and possibly to uh, comply with ADA accessibility requirements. Thank you, Lou. Thanks, Anne? I didn't mean to hold everybody. Hmm. Thank you. Anne, you're, uh, you're up next. So I, I'm really, I'm sorry to everybody for to be late, just, com, you know, technology problems. And Karen, I, I have other things I want to talk to you about. So I'm hoping before you head out, we can um, set up on that. We can uh, talk on, set something up on that. Um, I, I'm on both this committee and the transportation committee, and you may, you guys may have talked about this a lot, but in the last couple of years, the kind of the, like the landscape of public, of the, what falls under DOT has really changed a lot. Um, I mean, and is going to be changing a lot in the next couple of years with like the open streets and, you know, restaurants. And so I just want to really make sure that you're incorporating that into your thinking and those changes, which obviously like that's a moving target, but um, so, and somebody else may have raised that already. So my apologies if so. No, thank you. Um, I also should mention, I, I worked for DOT for a year. So um, 
it's definitely an interest of mine and I'll definitely make sure to incorporate some of that. Um, Jim, you have your hand up? Yeah, hi, Karen. Thank you for uh, doing what you're doing. Appreciate it. Um, I, I was thinking that just in view of the, of the limited amount of time that you have, um, perhaps it would be best to go through the um, 197A plan that we originally prepared and simply do like a, a four column um, analysis showing things that have been done, things that we would like to do. Obviously on the left on the left hand side, introduce the things that were, were proposed in the 197A plan way back when, but then show the things that have been accomplished, the things that remain to be accomplished, and the things that are, are dead wood, as it were, that things that you know we don't no longer need or or the community has moved on, et cetera, et cetera. And I, I think that's probably the most efficient use of your time um, rather than trying to take on a, an entirely new area. That's just my opinion. Um, and, and Jim, I think Kavitha has probably already um, given some of those highlights to Karim because we have talked about those in, our, um, in the strategic community planning so yeah, I know, I, but I, 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 I serve on that, and I, I know we've discussed it, but I don't think we've ever put a, a sheet, you know, just a, a summary sheet together of the type I'm talking about. And, you know, maybe that's a first step, but um, I think we really want to take advantage of, of Kieran's expertise and um, look at something maybe high level, as he stated, resiliency, how, how does that work in you know our current environment? Um, waterfront access for us now. We so maybe a little um, kind of forward thinking of ideas that we could we could take a look at that we would like to pursue as a community. How many hours left do you have, Karen? Total hours? Um, not exactly. We're probably about eight, mm, ten weeks of uh, ten hours. weeks of twelve hours a day. So 120 hours, roughly. Yeah, probably around yeah. that. Yeah. But that, so, that'll definitely be, um, I, I'm planning on producing one, something like that, the four column analysis. Um, are. That's part of my work, yeah. Thank you. But that's, that's a basis then for what you're going to make summaries on or analyze. And I'm, I'm guessing you may actually already have that to a certain degree. Uh, in progress, yeah. Yeah, so you've, you've read the plan, you sort of mm -hmm. have some idea. Mm -hmm. uh, Kavitha? And I was just going to say, Kieran is, you know, um, Kieran and I haven't had that much time to meet either since he was just back from the break, but I think we're going to spend a little time um, reviewing all the items line by line, as Jim mentioned, just to make sure we're clear on what's been done, what hasn't, what's been done that's not, you know, exactly as, as, as asked, like the 23rd Street ferry landing or something like that. And we can say, yeah, we don't need it since there's one on 20th or wherever it is. So, um, so we can go down that list and maybe if there's anyone in the this committee or on the board that wants to you know take part in any exercise like that, can let me know and we can circle back. Is that a I hand? Help, uh, I can help out on that too. Sandro, okay. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Ditto. Karen, even if it's like you you put together the Google sheet or whatever it is, like the matrix. No, I'll, I'll be happy to help. Okay. <laughs> I think you were muted. Sandy, since. you're muted. Okay, I'm saying, Anne, you have your hand up. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I was offering to help too, although, you know, too many cooks and all that. Um, Karen, I know that um, actually Ron and I were interested in talking to you about, we've been sort of talking about um, improving like rainwater mitigation and CSO stuff. So if we were thinking just to maybe run a few ideas past you and see if there are any big things that we're missing on that. Um, so if we might be able to schedule a time, that would be great. Well, cool, yeah. Um, I think I have your email from the last meeting and I'll, I'll send you an email. All right, I can, I can put it in the chat too. Okay, and cool. my phone number. 
Thanks, that would be great. Yeah, thank you. So Kieran, did you do you have other specific questions you'd like to ask? Do you have do you feel you have enough um, direction to to move forward? Yeah, I think definitely for the next month or so. Um, and last semester, I had a class during this meeting time, but this semester I don't, so I'll be able to attend uh, these meetings regularly. And if if anything else comes up, I'll be able to do ask it more timely. Well, we're going to make um, this a kind of standing item every month that, so that you can come in and report and ask or you know, if there's any additional information that you're looking for. Great. Great. Oh, Kavitha? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure, Karen, you had a chance to mention the um, share with this committee the census tract and the district lines, how they don't. I don't know if anyone else has an opinion about that. Karen brought something up to my attention, and I think you should share it with the rest of you. Yeah, thank you. Um, let me see if I can find the. Screen. If you can't find the diagram, you can just tell them what's you know the. <laughs> Basically, uh, the issue is that the census tracts don't line up with the uh, um, community district border, and so I was using uh, a slightly smaller study area be uh, because the census tracts, if I was including all of the district, it would include a lot of uh, blocks that aren't in the district, um, but I was wondering if that was, if it was better to go smaller or to take in more than just the boundaries of the district. Hmm. And, and given the diagram that Karen shared with me, it looked like it did make more sense to just go slightly smaller than the district lines because the census tract was just, just like slightly in, but inboard. But um, if he were to go broader, it would, it would really skew the data, I think, beyond our district. So Kavitha, you're saying that like there would be sort of there's always some kind of margin of error and it would be a greater margin of error if you went bigger rather than smaller. I think it would be given the, right, Karen, the, given the percentage of um, um, area you'd be looking at if you went wider with the census tracts. Yes. Yeah, that, that seems like the right metric to me. So I, I would support that. Okay, cool. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, if that's anything else, just let us know and we can send out um, additional information or um, yeah, we, we look forward to having the help that you're gonna provide. So anything we can do to help you, we're, we're happy to do. Cool, yeah, thank you all so much. Thanks, Karen. Okay, I think, um, we have the, the um, chair's report. Um, on December 28th, there was a meeting um, with the East Midtown Governing Group and um, the DOT is moving ahead with uh, their request for proposals for a team to develop uh, a visioning plan for the Park Avenue malls. So um, this is putting together a team and <coughs> visioning, uh, I guess they weren't, extremely explicit whether it would be a master plan or some ideas, but um, this is what the, um, some of the monies that were collected through the East, East Midtown rezoning are going towards paying for that team and that visioning. Um, and they were also looking for ideas of any um, area, any cities that had examples that we would like them to maybe take into account. So. That's something if you want to send me um, any recommendations, other cities that you think have similar conditions that also we can maybe take a look at. Um, they're also, as part of this same effort, the DOT is continuing to develop the plan for the 43rd Street shared street. And they're planning, I think, to come to the Transportation Committee in maybe February or March. And they're hoping to have the design finalized by 2023. And um, the spring of 2023, and then they'll start the construction in the fall of 2023. <laughs> and I think everybody admits that the current configuration is not that successful. So they're going back and re looking at, at some of the other aspects of it. Um, 
uh, the East, I'm actually on the community, the CAG for the ESCR. So um, it meets every, uh, the first Thursday of every month. So if there are any particular issues that you would like me to take to the meeting, I'd be happy to do that if you can let me know. Um, there's been a lot of input from project area one and there are a lot of concern with parks closures and um, very specific things for that area, but certainly it's a way, it's another opportunity to get information and, and try and follow up. Um, we did ask the, <coughs> excuse me, we did ask the EDC to come and give us an update on the bridge um, and the upper portion of the greenway that's under construction. They did not do that. Brendan tried very diligently. We will keep trying and ask them to potentially to come to next month's meeting. Um, I don't know, I will also circulate, there's a, 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 a pretty interesting movie of the installation of the bridge, which is now in place um, at 53rd Street. So um, they are moving forward, construction is moving ahead. Um, next month, we're going to potentially talk about, um, oh, uh, we asked the, the um, the public advocate's office to update us on the um, equitable zoning. And apparently they don't really have a, a policy in place yet. So they're developing that. So hopefully next month, they'll be able to come and talk to us about that. And um, we can also follow up with Jim's request to review form zoning um, and underused properties. And actually there is a program currently that some of the New York City libraries are redeveloping their sites and putting affordable housing above a new library. And apparently, um, I guess it's the Kipps Bay Library is one potential site for that. So that could be a very interesting um, thing that we might be able to advocate for. Um, <coughs> excuse me. One other issue, there's, um, we received some of the information, I don't know if um, from the last, full board meeting, if, if people remember that uh, there was a presentation about supportive housing and shelter information from our district. And we have, we do have that information. So it seems like something that we, it's really about land use and it's something that we should be trying to address in our committee. So if there were people who were interested in following up and maybe documenting that, um, taking a look, their fo the focus of um, the presenter at the full board was 29th Street. But um, it would be a good place to start to take a look at what is where we have supportive housing, where we have different types of, of shelters in our in our area. Um, would there be anyone who's interested in taking a look at that? Jim? Are you volunteering? Or are you asking a question? I'm oh, there we go. Finally, I, I kept <laughs> clicking and it wouldn't come off. Yeah, that's that's also part of the budget discussion. So, and I serve on on that board as well, or that committee as well. Um, I and I I'll save this for for new business if you like. But have we had any discussions either here or in transportation or anywhere else with respect to uh, the uh, the congestion pricing matter that's going to obviously affect our district? I haven't seen anything about it or mentioned. It. Maybe I've missed it or have we and talked about it at all it would come to transportation but i don't think there's been i don't think you're there's on any transport addition. right no i'm Aren't not on, oh okay i thought you no. were. uh jim i'm on transportation i don't i don't think uh, brendan you can correct me but i don't I mean, we we did in years past, but I don't think there's been any discussion recently. Yeah, because it's it's coming, and and you know, I'm I'm talking to people that are in uh, the service and delivery issue, delivery um, uh, businesses, and uh, it, it it's not <laughs> just a matter of our not being exempt, according to the mayor. If if, for example, we were to drive out of out of our district above uh, 60th Street, and then come back down and being charged for that. It's also a, a matter of our being charged additional charges for a delivery of, say, a piece of furniture or uh, an artwork or anything of that nature. So I think it's well, something I that, think, that I mean, should be hearings, 
hearings have been going on for the last few months. I'm not exactly sure the status now, but you know, they are kind of like in, in the figuring out the, mm -hmm. you know, kind of the regulations. So I, I, and, and I would, sorry, I would, it, it, transportation. Yeah. It's yeah. a transportation uh, issue. It'll come yeah. up with them right. definitely. So when it, it does, I'm sure you can uh, attend the meeting. Th there should it should be an agenda item so that the community can speak to it, our local community, not just you know generally among the, all of those <laughs> wider hearings. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Madam Chair, mm -hmm. uh, we had item three, the uh, electric vehicle charging matter which uh, was on the agenda and hasn't been addressed and that's a pickup of very old business for the committee and I'd, I'd like to address that if we may. Um, Lou that was item number one on the agenda and we had um, J Jackson from um, um, Assemblyman Epstein's office came and made a presentation. Well I'm not uh, sure if you addition. missed that portion of the meeting. Uh, something else you'd like to add? Oh, yes, there's a considerable amount uh, that needs to be addressed. Uh, it's a pickup of uh, old business on the, uh, of the board. We passed, uh, over the period of time, we've passed three or four resolutions dealing with the matter. Um, and I think it's time that uh, perhaps uh, we should uh, take a, an aggressive posture and do some, some forward planning. Um, I'm sorry, Lou. Lou what I'm not sure when you when you joined the meeting because we have discussed this. Um, it was the very first item on the agenda. No, my my agenda shows it as, as item three. Um, it was item two, and we just changed. We switched with uh, with the um, with the design and construction of the East Coast Resiliency. So it, we we have a list of of propose of. Um, items that are before the assembly and actually um, Adam and uh, Kavitha are going to take a look. If you would like to, to participate with them, that's that would be great. So um, they can maybe fill you in on what we discussed. It's actually an item of old business. It's been carried forward at when uh, Adam was uh, chair of the committee and it was posted as, as old business, but we never got to it. Uh, and I so like he's he's gonna he'll be able to keep you updated then on what we did. If if that's okay, I mean it's just I don't know if he when you did join the meeting because we have. It was a little bit that. late, and I apologize for that. It was uh, um, unlike me. So um and um ab absolutely no problem, but um maybe you can um go over it with Adam and Kavitha then and. And yeah. there are a pretty extensive list. It's it's actually very encouraging how how many different bills are in front of the assembly. So we'll take it up again next month. Actually, the approach I'm uh, coming at it with this uh, has, I suspect, a little bit to do with the state legislature. But the the governor's already uh, weighed in on the subject. But I have some uh, an approach on this that just uh, is very New York City uh, and the zoning matter rather than uh, the state or anything like that. Okay, well, um, certainly that's something, if, if I think we're looking for a resolution. So if, um, you know, if, if we could draft one for the next meeting, that would be great. Be happy to work with Kavita and uh, uh, Adam on that. Uh, and if they would give, each of them would give me a call, we could arrange a meeting uh, so we can address the issue, um, preferably, I know it's a little bit risky, but uh, preferably as a face-to-face -face, uh, subcommittee rather than the Zoom. <laughs> if, they, if they have no objection. Well, well, I'll leave it up to, uh, to the three of you, but um, yes, no, it's something that um, definitely there is interest in the committee, so we can move forward. Um, and any other new or old business? Um, I, I'd like to um, maybe put out the idea of how starting our meetings at seven rather than six thirty. Would we have so any moved. objections? <laughs> any objections to that? Yeah, it's just it's very difficult. Ask for a second oh, to the motion. Kavitha, Kavitha I don't action. object. I was gonna I, I was gonna say that 
I actually thought the meeting was at seven and then I freaked out when I realized it was at six 30 <laughs> today. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm on board. Great. Okay. So next month we'll, we'll meet at seven. Okay. So I got to change my DVR to record <laughs> Jeopardy. <laughs> okay. And um, I hope everybody got a chance to, to, to see Beatrice with that. Um, Adam was our, our newest member of our. Yeah, we. I, I, she she did a great job photo bombing. Um, unfortunately, she's asleep, so I can't bring her in for an encore. So I have to wait for him. Um, oh, she's... Adam, I'm so sorry to have missed that. Like, not to mention just like. Yeah, I was hoping you were on the thing. I was like, uh, yeah, no, I just yeah. I had, problems, <laughs> but yeah. So um, we'll take it offline. Yeah. Next meeting. Yeah. Mm. Looking forward um, to it. <laughs> um, uh. I'd like to have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Great. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay. Good night.